Hey everybody, great to have you back again. We're here with Josh and Georgie part two, where last session we were speaking on isolation and pressure, coping with both of those in a pandemic context world, plus in the normal run of things as a pastor and a leader. Great to see you, Josh, it's Georgie. Great. It's Loving great the conversation. Here. Thanks. Yeah, everyone. it's such a pleasure just to actually hang out with you and, yeah. and, and talk through these, these areas. Uh, we were talking before about some of the effects of the COVID pandemic shutdown and how it's affected the rhythms mm. of people's lives. I was talking to one of our pastors recently and they said, yeah, our people, they've discovered the beach yeah. on Sundays <laughs> and they're loving it and they don't really, you know, they've got two minds about whether they're going to turn up at church or not mm -hmm. on Sunday. So, you know, uh, and then there are others who are a bit nervous, you know, uh, maybe more mature age people wondering about being in a crowded room with a whole bunch of people or people who have got compromised immune systems. Uh, and there's a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. Even though the restrictions are easing, yeah, and we've got pretty good attendance, you know, better than most. I heard that some people, uh, I've listened to two uh, sources of church survey style people who've said 30%, expect 30% of the people to come back. Wow. And I refuse that. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to happen. No. Yeah. We're going to have a 100% plus yeah. return, but I don't think it's just going to happen magically. Yeah. Tell us uh, what steps you're taking to keep people engaged and to make sure that they are, you know, returning into the flock. The thing that comes uh, to mind is prayer. I think that's really helped us since March when this all started to happen is we do every morning there's 8 a.m. prayer and then Tuesday particularly is like more of an all church prayer. So can you can I just stop you? How do you pray? It's through Zoom, Zoom. Um, at, at the moment. So uh, we can't gather yet uh, as as we're filming this. Um, we can, but none of our venues will we're let us. We're talking New York City. Yeah, People. New York yeah. City. So Shut for, for context. Shut down city, yeah. Um, and so. <laughs> Not Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're really see, see you this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, and but yeah, we're, we're watching other parts of the country. Like I was just in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, with Pastor Chris Hodges, and they've reopened. But the, it's kind of encouraging in a way because the, the same thing's happening worldwide. Yeah. Yes. So I think it's a good encouragement to every leader. It's like he's you know second largest church in America, and even them have had a huge drop off. Yes. Um, so I think I think we just have to get secure as leaders, and really, uh, for me, back to prayer. It's like. If our people are in prayer and in the Word of God, I trust the Holy Spirit in them to give them a desire to want to come back to yeah, worship. And sure. I think we have to trust that. But at the same time, we need to disciple people and create mm -hmm. uh, fresh habits and recover those old habits. Exactly. So we're, we're way behind where you guys are. So we're, we're obviously looking to... Sydney and I know New Zealand's back open. You guys yeah. are really ahead of the world, which is great because you've dealt with the pandemic so well. But I think uh, for us, our, our discussions around worship and prayer and maybe some different style of meetings just to get that muscle moving. Yeah. Yes. So it's not just pressure on that Sunday straight away for right. us. Right. And keep the online thing going and not make it feel like okay, we're just cutting off, you know, yeah. pulling the plug on online. I think keeping all those things going yeah. so people have options. Sure. But then exampling, hey, this is really important that we don't neglect the habit of meeting together. Right. Yeah, telling people that. And I think praying together for the opening. So yeah. like, and including the church in that, yes. in our prayer meetings. Right. So we want to open, let's pray for venues to to allow us yeah, to open in New exactly. York. And we need people back in church, let's pray for that. Yes. So you're not just a pastor carrying that desire, right. but your team then grabs a hold of that desire and then your church and understands how important it is to gather together. But also like kids need church. So, you know, as a mother. There you go. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, it's easy to say, oh, we get the family, the beach day together. But, um, you know, I grew up in kids' church. You grew up in kids' church. Yeah. I'm so thankful yeah. because it's foundational. Yeah. And um, we have to remember for those of us that have families that 
um, where you're taking your kids is so important. And I just think, yeah, yeah, you might be fine to read the Bible and watch something online, but I know with our kids, they watch a bit of Kids Church online, but they're nowhere near as engaged as they would be. So I think that's important for families to remember and for leaders to remember. It's a a funny um, two-edged sword because on the one hand, when you can't meet, you want to promote online church. So it's amazing. Yes. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but my experience is when you actually return mm-hmm. to church, when you come back together, there is Nothing no like substitute it. for it. Wow. No. The yeah. feeling, the joy, the fellowship, the worshiping together. Mm-hmm. But I got to tell you, the 20 minutes before the service and the half hour afterwards, yeah. you can't get that yeah. online. Yeah. And, and, and so it's that time when you're just hanging around, fellowshipping. Yeah. It's not just community. It's not just, uh, it's, it's not just talking and chatting. There's a thing called fellowship, yeah. which is a spiritual communion. Yeah. That ca- I just find it so hard to experience that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's great. Online. So I think online is a great substitute. Yeah. But it is no substitute for actually being no, together. Real fellowship. Yeah. yeah. And, and I wonder about discipleship as well. Like we're living in the fruit of discipleship, right? Yeah. So we were discipled. People saw me or saw me doing things or speaking a certain way, spoke to me, encouraged me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. How do you do that? Yeah, no one can see your no world. No one can see your world. You're watching. Right. And I and I love church online and we want to keep doing it. Yeah. But I, I do wonder about discipleship and how that will affect sure. true discipleship. Like people being in your world, seeing you and being totally. able to disciple you. Totally. And grow you totally. If we don't gather physically. Yeah. My, yeah. We were talking earlier about the, the idea of as a pastor, which we are all reaching out to people and as Christians trying to get friends and family along to church. Yeah. I think if they see the pastor, he just wants you back in church Mm -hmm. and isn't really as concerned about your spiritual discipleship development. Yeah. That's right. I think we, as pastors and leaders, we kind of need to check our motives a little. That's right. Do I just want more people in church or do I actually, am I actually in, in love with the individuals, mm-hmm. not just the crowd? Yeah. yeah. Am I concerned about this person's spiritual formation yeah. of Christ in them? Or, uh, and, and so when that is genuine yeah. in our lives that I am, because I want churches to grow. I That's want great. all of our churches. Yeah. Yeah. And I talk in numbers all the time, but I know that each number represents a life. Yeah. And I'm wanting to affect that life. And yeah. I know the best context I can actually disciple people is in church life. Right. But that doesn't mean that getting people to church turns them into a disciple. Yeah. We don't want to just create churchians. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a churchianity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we want to have people living with Christ. Yes. And it's in the context of church, but that is the core of what we're all about. I think it, it's so good. Um, you bringing that up, I think it is a time where we can reassess what what we're feeding people. Right. Yeah. And like you're saying, your motives, your heart as a leader of why you want to do church, mm-hmm. because I think that comes through everything. Mm. And I think we've we've really been talking a lot about okay, pathways of discipleship. What is what are the next steps for people, mm-hmm. and how do we provide that on Sundays, but also in other moments? And this is a good chance to not feel the pressure of creating the biggest Sunday moment Mm. as if that's going to solve everything. Mm. And that, I think that's always the overflow. Yeah. Like we, we want to see that we want, that's right. Heaven's going to be millions and millions and billions of worshipers. It's it's awesome. But like you're saying, it's that Christ likeness. Yes. How do we actually see that happen in our lives and the lives of New Yorkers and, and people in all these amazing cities so it is a chance to kind of really relook at Sundays. Totally, and and it re- redefines success. Yeah, I think so that we're not using people to build the church. That's great, yeah. but we're using the church 
to grow people. Yeah. Yes. And and I think or to build people. I th- and I think that if that is our measure of success, then it takes a lot of pressure off us. Mm-hmm. Oh, we we got a thousand seat auditorium. We only got two hundred people turning up. It's so discouraging. You know. I mean. Yeah. What's your measurement? And, well, yeah. So, so what? You yeah. Know, that, what, what's the quality of life in those people's worlds? Yeah. Yeah. And if people feel that we really are looking for. Christ to be formed in them and that we're wanting them to stand tall. I mean, I'm all for yeah. large churches, big gatherings. I believe they can have impacts on cities and do things that you can't do when, you, when you're small. All 100%. For. Yeah. But if that's, my, if that's my motivation and my end game, I think I might miss the point and I'm just going to be winding up yeah. everything about church yeah. to just get people along, yeah. register for this, make sure you're doing this, get, because we're just using you to grow the church. But how about we, we use the church to grow the people yeah. and, so uh, and release them, develop them into a fulfilled and meaningful life? That's the word. I think release is the word. Release mm-hmm. and empowerment. Yeah. And that's what Jesus did. It was the right. Great Commission, raising up 12 guys, releasing them. The effect was huge. Yeah. So we should be thinking that way in, in all that we do and then totally. teaching others to do that. And I think the uh, the difference between leadership and discipleship is interesting to me. I think we've maybe lost our way a little yes. bit because leadership to me is more about vision and direction, which is super right. important. But yep. discipleship is about the quality of the ship. Yes. <laughs> it's the yeah. quality of the person. But if you don't have that, the leadership becomes quite empty. Yeah. yeah. And I think we're seeing that in contemporary Western church sometimes, if it's just all leadership direction yeah. yes. and there's no quality, yeah. then yeah. you actually miss out and you don't reach the vision totally. if there's no quality people. Yeah, the stage is fighting the pew. Yeah. When when everybody in the pew is wanting to be three percent of Christianity are in the stage, are on the stage. Yeah. Ninety seven percent are sitting in the pew. And they're all going there, oh, one day I want to be that, I want to be that. Well, I, I think we've set ourselves up for the, really the wrong context. Yeah. We're wanting people all week long to be disciples. That's right. We want them all week long to serve the Lord, not just to serve the Lord for 90 minutes exactly. a week on, in, in a church setting, yeah. but to have a heart of a servant mm-hmm. in life yeah. yeah, and to be hospitable in life yeah. and, and to show Jesus wherever we go. And the, the Sunday meetings should be empowering our people, I think, yeah. Yes. Yeah. to accomplish that. Yeah, exactly. So in Daughters, the, the, the women's ministry you yeah. develop, yeah. Georgie, Talk about that, how you're um, doing that in COVID. Yeah. So we did at the beginning, so we do four events a year and it's a major part of our church. Like the girls are really come out. It's yeah. outreach driven. Like it's a huge evangelism um, arm of our church. And uh, so we just had to bring it online. Um, right. But so we did a Zoom event and just made it fun, creative ways to engage the girls. Um, but I, I did a message and just preached like it was a regular event. I think it's just, it's not obviously physically the same, but with that same heart, that same passion, like you guys have been doing every week, <laughs> um, you know, p- reaching the screen, but then just creating fun ways for people to connect. So usually people have their dinner parties and then we have church. And so they're with the same people every Wednesday and then they're Sunday. So we've just created ways that girls could connect maybe outside of their locations into, um, outside of their dinner parties, meet other friends. And so we just created other connection moments in smaller groups online. So that's been good. Um, but I'm just gearing up for next year. And we've just created weekly content um, released. I, I would say that yeah. Georgie's done an awesome job with the social media because there's so yeah. many girls released mm. to tell their stories right. and to share their revelation right. uh, on the Word of God. Yeah. And so I've been trying to get the guys to copy them because it's just so clear and very empowering. Yeah, I got a message from yeah. someone the other day. We just did a daily um, Instagram live, but I didn't do them. The, I didn't do them. The girls did them just in our church and on something specific. And I got a message from someone the other day saying they were in a full on lockdown quarantine and they watched it every day and it got them through. Beautiful. And so we just try to do social media stuff, get the word of God in people's in front of people's eyes, in their heart. Yeah. Is yeah. that preaching or written? That's that's someone doing a live 
sharing from the scripture, someone who's never done it before, right. every day, one of our girls. Live. Instagram live. Live Instagram live. Yeah, how IG long, live. How long is that? Um, we re- they were longer at first and then we realised they need to be about 15 minutes. 15? Yeah. Okay, so it's a message on yeah, a topic? Yeah, around or a topic. So yeah. I struggle with anxiety. This is how I got through it. And this is the scripture I God gave me for that. Or I um, had a miscarriage um, last year. I want to tell you my story. Or yeah. just getting the girls' stories out there it's to lift it? people's yeah. faith. Yeah. Um, and I was busy homeschooling, so I was like, God, what will I? What can I do? How am I going to lead all these women? And He's like, release the girls. And so I think as pastors, Perfect. understanding the season you're in as yeah. well, Perfect. and as female pastors, where we have in New York had the kids at home. And so it's been cool because God's not limited by that. No. Yeah. And when you do that, people discover the gifts that they've got. Yes, exactly. And that's yeah. discipling 101. Yes. That's it. Give people a job. Yeah. It shows the power of the word, which I'm excited about from this online season, that the word still doesn't return void. Right. So it's really like the icing on the cake when you talk about, oh, we get to meet again, because that's been really cool for me as a pastor to see the word still working, Yes. Yep. even though we can't do other things. Yeah. And I think maybe that's what the Lord, there's many things I believe the Lord's teaching us, but that's one thing that I've seen that maybe we've minimized the power of the word, even though we yes. know that and we say yeah. that, really seeing the word of God change lives. Right. And we've, we've seen that. I mean, uh, an amazing couple started watching church for yeah. the first time. They were divorced for five years mm. and they just got remarried and moved back in together and receiving Christian counseling. But it happened through, and she'll, she'll post about it all the time. Incredible. From the Word of God. Incredible. She discovered forgiveness. Yeah. She discovered Beautiful. how to bring healing back to a marriage. Beautiful. And that's the power of the Word. The Word. Yeah. Yeah. You know, talking about discipleship, both of all of us have just mentioned that with the difficulty of how you do this online. I'm not so sure that we uh, we need to think of it as too difficult. We mm-hmm. can still do some of the same principles. But here's, here's some of the things I've been thinking about. Uh, oftentimes, churches are taking their weekend service and just put that online. Well, that's the worst thing on earth you can do. Especially if it wasn't working there, yeah, yeah, exactly. it's going to not work times a hundred yeah, yeah. online, because people come online and to listen to your uh, us singing three songs at the start of the service, then a forty-minute message with an offering in the middle or something, and then a call to salvation, that is not going to work by any means online. Mm-hmm. So then we get this online sort of hybrid thing going, sing one song, a little offering burst maybe, um, and we figure that you've got to do the calls to action at the start because people click off at the end. So then you do your 15 minute message. So it's like a, a, a shrunk version mm. of the online church. But I wonder if there isn't a discipling manner that we can actually take online, such as yeah. giving somebody else a shot mm. like you did, or various other things. But mm. one thing I would say is that we can, rather than being the stage who's ministering to the pew, and we can actually invite the pew to start, and when I say that, it's a generic term yeah. for our congregations. Instead of us saying, let me pray for you now, we could say, I want you to pray now for the people in the room. Yeah. And so they ta- it That's takes great. the church right into their room. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Or, or each one of you pray right now for one another. Reach out. Mm. And rather than us being the messiahs <laughs> who, who bring in the blessing, mm-hmm. yeah. you guys put the blessing on in, you, right. in, in the room there. And... Um, so and so, can you read this scripture? Uh, you know, in one of those dinner parties, mm-hmm. daughters' meetings, mm. and let them start to actually activate the gifts, the callings, the leadership skills yeah. I've got right there in the room. We're coming to a close. Any closing thoughts? No, I just love what you're just saying. Then, you know, I think that's the key. It's it's releasing and empowering. Like Jesus didn't call a congregation to himself, and then that was it. It was always about empowering them to then go out and reach the world. So I think if there's anything we can do out of this online season, 
that's one thing we definitely need to really think about, not just say, oh, we're releasing, like, what are the steps? What's the communication? Mm. How do we actually do that? And right. try some things and, and be okay if people fail. Yeah. And then just go for it. Yeah, sure. Any closing thoughts? Georgia no, Kelsey? I just want to thank you for having us. <laughs> I love these videos. So I fun. think what Global's doing is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. This, this stuff, especially in this season, it's so needed. Yeah. So thanks for having us. Wow, yeah. such a pleasure. Thanks, uh, Josh and George, for being with us, two of the finest ministers on <laughs> earth. And we are privileged to be colleagues in the ministry with these guys in New York City, Paris and Berlin, and obviously a lot more cities to come. Everybody, it's been a pleasure talking to you and we're believing with you for a magnificent year. In Jesus' mighty name, God bless you.